Good morning, everyone. Took me a little bit, of course, you got to do the good setup in the picture, but wanted to give a little bit of a recap to how Iron Man 70.3 Worlds went. And uh, the short answer, if you don't want to listen to me babble on, is that it went relatively well, that there was a race execution that had to be made given that I wasn't going into the perfect of fitness. And overall, I thought it went really well. Uh, sub five hour performance which for the type of course that this is um, that is fantastic at least for me personally now there were a ton of athletes that were just so much faster than me um, and I'll get into that in a little bit but uh, for the most part it turned out really well I mean the bike uh, I'll have to pull up my stats from the Ironman app but I had like a 29 minute 30 I think yeah 29 38 swim transition was eight minutes which I'll talk in a little bit bike was 234 16 and a transition into run was 407 with a bit of a vernacle uh, and then the run was a 139 27 which for a 780 foot elevation gain run course I think that was more than satisfactory so let's get into it uh just starting with the swim or just even before the swim it was uh it was a little bit chilly not gonna lie uh, i was feeling a little bit cold getting there uh we had to go i had to go find parking uh in the finish area then go and take a shuttle and afterwards uh that shuttle took like 25 30 minutes just to get to san paulo so i was having uh, muffins from the hotel from the previous day that were refrigerated uh, which worked out fine I also had a, two bananas it's kept it pretty light for breakfast which again it worked fine I've, I've done that before in race day then uh, going into transition the bike setup was really quick had to go and the, I was a little bit worried that my tire pressure was going to be a little bit low because it was going to be chilly it did lower a little but I was able to go and make up and uh, inflate the tires to race day pressure 110 psi uh, so there were no issues in the bike really um, had two gels on the bike for backup so um, and I ended up using both which turned out to be a good decision um, which I'll describe a little bit later uh, then uh, going in and I had about an hour and a half once I was done with bike transition before my start time at 817 I didn't get in one until about 820 in the morning uh, but it was it was basically just all focus and mental preparation from there and just trying to stay warm uh, so I put the wetsuit on pretty early to keep warm which I think was helpful but it still was a little bit chilly but everybody else was dealing with it so I said what the heck um, then uh, going directly into the swim uh, the swim was pretty standard I guess <laughs> to say the very least there was a little bit of zigzagging that was happening and not really too much I could have done about it because it was weird how the did the plate be uh, uh, did the placements um, in the water but then once the zigzagging finished off then it was pretty straight out corner and back and uh, kind of an uneventful swim which is good I felt pretty smooth for the most part although my arms were a little bit tiring because I'm not in the best of swim shape uh, for those that have heard me on my previous YouTube vlogs um, I gotta put the sunglasses on here it's getting too bright uh, yeah so then um, yeah, the swim was uneventful. I mean, I was hoping for a sub 30 minute swim and that's what happened. And I was passing a ton of people and then they all passed me on the bike. Uh, <laughs> I passed at least a hundred plus athletes on my way out through the water. So uh, the swim overall, I would say is a satisfactory performance. Uh, then we got into transition. I said, it's an eight minute transition for me. I was not going to rush transition. I had wetsuit peelers. Uh, that were helping me so thank you to all the volunteers especially to that wetsuit peeler because th that made my life so much easier um, then grabbed the bag and then 
Uh, I had my tri shoes on, but also with uh, boot covers, and I decided to wear socks. All really good decisions. Lessons that were learned from Ironman Washington 70.3 last year when it's really cold and chilly, you've got to go and put on booties. Uh, and then, uh, then I also had thermal warmers. So, another thing, I had thermal warmers on with me during the swim. That also turned out to be not that bad of a decision. If anything, it turned out to be good. Uh, it didn't hurt me one in another ways. I put on my thermal running gloves because I knew it was going to be cold. I had a little bit of finagling that I had to do with the gears all day. Um, but transition was a slow one. Uh, I'm not going to really comment more on that because this year transitions has not really been a focus at any of these races. Except for USET Nationals where I kind of had a botched transition. But you can view my video there. Uh, so then going onto the bike, uh, I was trying to turn on my bike computer from sleep mode but it wasn't turning on so I had no idea and I had zero power output through or zero power reading through the entirety of the bike which sucked so I went to backup plan number one which was I had my tri watch uh, not this watch shown here but I had my 400 920 XT and I said okay go to bike mode and just start going off of heart rate so all I just had was time heart rate and um can't remember something um I think uh time and heart rate really was the only two things I could really rely on and I kind of was just relying on the mile markers to know okay how fast I was going um I didn't sync up my 920 XT with these uh with the power pedals that I had so uh that's another lesson that I've got to learn from there as a backup measure but yeah I had no power reading so I went purely off a of heart rate which is not ideal but probably served me better than not because that meant that I was not going to be over biking uh, which is a good thing uh, especially given a really difficult hilly course like this is and there were a lot of hills and uh, I had people pass me going up the hill and then I bombed it down the hill with my tri bike and doing the doing the super tuck when going down some of these hills flying down 40 sometimes upwards of 50 miles an hour on some of these hills that was a lot of fun and that's where being super tucked in air on having the sleeves really was helping me out so uh that turned out really well for me and uh I, the plan going in for the bike was uh go and have steady power for the most part and not try to blow any matches up these hills until I hit Snow Canyon, which I'm going to be blowing a match. And so I think I executed pretty well on that. And uh, bike time of 2.34 was not exactly the time, but uh, I'll absolutely take it given how degraded my bike fitness has been. Uh, then we get from the experiences pretty much I took water at each of the aid stations because I only brought two bottles with me anticipating I was going to be taking water uh, I took four gels including one in T1 uh, so that's five gels total so far uh, three humas two isotonic I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to get any electrolyte down in me I took a little more water than what I was used to, but I ended up probably only consuming about two and a half liter, uh, bottles of fluid, which is very standard to what I was doing in my training ride. So uh, execution there, pretty good, I would say, on the day. So I'm not gonna complain about that. Uh, then, uh, yeah, going up Snow Canyon was t difficult. Uh, definitely spaced everybody out. I was kind of falling back a little bit, but I said, you know what? I've got to race my own race. I can't rely on uh, trying to chase down people because that's not how you go and race. Um, I told myself throughout the entirety of this race, go and race smart, don't race fast. You can race fast when you race smart. And so that's a common theme that uh, was with me the entirety of the day. And I just said, stick with the plan, execute on the plan. And you'll hear me this over and over again which played out basically almost to perfection uh, for the day, given all the circumstances leading into it. Uh, then we get to T2. I told you a little early, I had the kerfuffle where 
I was able to get the shoes off and then I realized, oh wait, they're Velcroed in. <laughs> I had to remember that, so that took a little bit longer and then trying to get everything in the bag and the bike helmet in the bag. And so I was kind of fiddling with the hands, not realizing, oh wait a minute, I need to also get my arm sleeves off because it was going to be warm on the run. And so that took another 20 seconds. And so D2 was kind of a little bit of a kerfuffle. And, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but it was not the fastest T2 and coming out of the gate I was a uh, this was where we got to the run and uh, the run was challenging to say the very least if not hard difficult uh, it was definitely lung busting and no oh, man I was having this was hard I'm not gonna lie uh, two uh, so it's a two loop course uh, you have to go uphill twice and it's like two and a half, two and three quarters miles from basically the start to uh, the end of the top. And at the top of the uphill, holy cow, uh, it got really technical. Um, that's, it was just challenging to say the very least. And I knew I was not going to have a very fast run, but I was surprised how fast I kind of went off on that first lap. But the second lap, uh, lap was definitely a reality check for me where I was hurting. And it mentally was a struggle just to get up some of these hills. So that was that was really the summary of the run. I took water into every aid station. Um, I brought three gels with me. I consumed them in my plan, mile two, mile six, mile ten. And attacked the downhills where I was able to keep pace rather than lose, uh, lose pace on the uphills. Like everybody was flying past me like... Everybody was absolutely flying uh, past me. So, uh, not much I could say to that. Because I knew I wasn't going to be strong on the run. And, yeah, it was difficult. I wasn't sure if I was going to chafe a lot more. I did end up having a blister on my right toe, which I'm going to have to deal with over the next several days. That's not going to be fun. But I just said, leave it out there on the course. I mean, I kind of wanted to go and finish safely but I was like you know what this is a world championships race uh, you're going to leave everything out there on the course and I left it out there on the course so uh, 139 28 run uh, very good solid run for me at least for where my fitness is at which is not great running or overall fitness so um, happy with that result and yeah so that's basically the race and it the execution was very good. Uh, I was very happy that I was able to execute on a plan and the plan worked. Uh, and I know several friends that are out there that also had really good races. Some of them, maybe not as much, but they're all champions. I mean, they're all to complete a really difficult course and given everything that is of circumstance around, uh, with what they're dealing with. I mean, the fact that you're completing what is, I would consider a very challenging course, uh, you give yourself a hat, a pat on the back for that and hats off to them. I mean, it, this was hard. Uh, this is definitely one of the harder races I've done and I'm super happy with a sub five hour performance. Uh, there were a lot of fast athletes that were out there. I was like, sub five hours for me normally would be like top 20. But nope, I was in the middle of the pack. This is just how difficult the age group is with 30 to 34. And I'm, I'm just like, and I never really come in with the time. And here I am, and I was smiling throughout. I mean, I was smiling with a grunt on my face. I was like a, I was trying to smile, but I was hurting. Uh, and uh, I was just leaving it at that, so. So overall, that's the race report for me. Uh, again, the kind of a recap is that it went well, and uh, I executed on the plan. I, I knew I wasn't going to be the fastest on the day, and uh, yeah, there's just some really, really awesomely fast age groupers that were out there. I mean, some of them were sub four hours for the age group, which I'm just like, are you kidding me on a course like this? Um, and congratulations to all the finishers, no matter what their time was. I think they said 97, 98% of people finished, which is an incredible feat. And yeah, so that's the race recap. Uh, now I got to head to the Grand Canyon with my family. 
So I'll be disconnecting from the network for a little bit until I get back to Las Vegas. Uh, for those that are curious as to why I post a race recap without posting the other days, well, I lost my other GoPro. So you're probably seeing in the mirror, this is a different GoPro. So I actually got myself another GoPro, yeah. Uh, it's just an expensive one, but uh, I do YouTube vlogging now. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I have a new GoPro, uh, the new insights. I'm actually pretty motivated now to start to attack this off season and start to get faster. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do, especially with overall speed. Like I have endurance, but I don't have the speed to go and back it up. And that's really what I think is the recap and all. Uh, I'll post a couple of videos and you'll see me kind of go through some additional thoughts as I go through the Grand Canyon here on how the season went. But uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later as this breakfast is going to get cold on me. Uh, so I'll go and have breakfast now. And uh, as always, if you like the content of this video, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And of course, hit the bell notification if you want to uh, get updates to videos that I go and post. And of course, leave a comment down below, get what your thoughts are, uh, whether that be the pro field or with the age group field and with any of the others that may be out there on the course. So uh, again, congratulations to all the finishers. Uh, this was definitely a tough one uh, for a lot of folks. I think everybody was definitely putting everything out there, myself included. And with that, until the next video and breakfast time, Yoshi out.